lenses, all types of lenses, delicious types of lenses. Let's talk about the 360 boost setup that I'm going to be doing here today. Lenses, well, won't play so much of a role in this video, but I'm energized and I'm going to show you how I set up my 360 booth and also the settings to get those crisps clean, high production value videos. Let's go. Now, before I get started, I wanted to tell you guys that I am using a 100 centimeter automatic booth. Let's go. This right here is called the D mount because it's like the letter D for driven. And so I like this because it's a lot more stable than the other 360 boots I've had in the past. If you guys want to check out my manufacturer, I will go ahead and list Jeremy in the description box below. These are the settings I have. I set it so it's one, two, three, and then boom, four. Let's go ahead and insert it right now. This right here is the most powerful beater. So if you get them badass kids, you pull one of these out and you tell them, hey, you leave that bubble machine alone. And then this one right here is the one that I take with me. This is the primary one. The other one is a spare. Now take a quick look at this. I am using an Ulanzi with a cold shoe right there. Quick release plate. Um, I always take a spare with me just in case one of these bad boys breaks, whatever. You got to have backup. So when I order anything from Jeremy for the 360, I always tell him, bro, charge me extra, but give me a spare arm. And so now <laughs> I'm good to go. There's some details that I want to show you. Follow me this way. A little closer, baby. A little closer. Can we get a little closer, baby? I want to get to know you, lady. Is this good? Yep, this is definitely going to help out. All right, David, let's take these folks on to the next step. The next step is this. All right, so let's talk about it. Introducing the new. No, guys, so really, I've been through a few different setups with my 360 booth. Because one, I'm always shooting for the best quality, best presentation, but the best overall functionality. And so right here, as you guys can see, I have two lights. These lights are facing the attendees when they are on the booth. And so when I turn them on, I usually have them on at a cooler temperature. And as far as the power goes, it's at the minimum. What's great is this, that even though they're set to the minimum, as you guys can see right here, for every two hour event, if I leave it at minimum, we'll only lose one, one level of battery. All right, so we'll be left with three. Now, if I hire to like medium, then yeah, I'll end up with like half the battery. So you guys wanna gauge how much light you're using. The reason I switch it up from like low to medium is depending on how much existing light we have and so you want to make sure that you don't do this brightness all the way up because then you get that overexposure. Kind of like this. You kind of want it more like around right here. Look at that. See, you guys, you got to get familiar with your equipment. So you don't want the overexposure. You want some like around right there. Okay. Now, right here, guys, I have a spare battery. Now, this little bad boy right here is uh, 10,000 milliamps. And it has an elbow connector right here that goes into my phone. Let's go grab my phone so I can show you. How I connect the little elbow. It would have been a lot easier if I would have done what I usually do. What I usually do is I connect the phone first and then I put this in here. Oopsies. A message. All right. You see that? And now, we're going to do this. We're going to bring the phone down a little bit like this. Watch me press. Want me to watch me push the phone down, like that, to give it some stability, right? Boom. And now I'm gonna go ahead and bring it right over here, and with my handy dandy quick release plate right here, I'm gonna go ahead and insert it right in here, and check this out. Boom. Right, right. Check this out. I'm gonna put it in just like that. See that? Now I can 
I can control this and I can just tighten it, for example, right here. See that? And then I'll just stiffen it up and there. So now whenever I have events, I want you guys to check this out. By the way, look at this backdrop. In the jungle, the mighty jungle, the lion sleeps tonight. That's a beautiful backdrop right there. You guys can get those high quality backdrops now on my website. Who would have thought, right? No, I want to bring the best quality to you guys. All right. So this is how amazing this setup is going to look. You guys, like I said, can tilt it from left to right because it has your gyro. Look at that. Let's go ahead and zoom in. Bam. You see that? It's a beautiful thing. Now let's say it's time to go. Let's wrap it up. All right, let's go. Look at that. Did you see, did you see that? Do you remember the guys of those days where we had to twist the Ulanzi light and then it'll break here? Let me show you real quick. This light right here, you guys remember this light? This light was a champion. It's time is done. So if you guys are still using this, Make sure, remember your boy has your back, and I told you this a long time ago in another video, use this with the quick release plate so you don't wear out the actual female threads in there. There's supposed to be, yep, there's two. So please take this suggestion, either go this route, I have all the links on this video, right? Or go this route, put your phone inside, but have a quick release plate. Cool, quick release plate link also in the description below. So let's go back and I'm gonna add this right in here, like that. Just hit, as soon as you hear it, click like that. You know it's on. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and launch Snapic. That is my preferred app for now because it has an incredible stabilizer. All right, let me go ahead and select that right there. And keep in mind, guys, right now, I'm not using any surrounding light besides the lights that are already happening. We got one light right over there, that big bright spot right there. We have the 360 neon light right there. We got a bunch of light. By the way, this is my cable charging station. So everything you guys see in here are things that I charge. Like, for example, we got anchors right over there. We have some voice amplifiers, some RGB lights. Oh. You know, today I'm using the 24 volt 360 booth, so I'm gonna be using this bad boy right here, mine. Now this one is for this specific booth because this is 24 volts. My other 360 booths are 12 volts, so this is 24 volts. And as you guys can see, so this is 24 volts talent cell, leave in the description box below. Now this right here, this allows me to be mobile, portable. Basically, all I need is this, my 360 booth spinning, ready to go, caption massive, massive memories. So I love this because it's gonna last me for over three hours. I think you can get five hours out of it, but here's the catch. You wanna go ahead and just use it for the 360 booth arm and not for the lights, because if this powers on your lights, then we all know it's gonna require more power. So let, let's go ahead and uh, install this really quick. I'm gonna just install this to the, uh, to the inlet right down there. I'll be right back. Woo! Now let me go ahead and get the remote. I'll find the remote. The remote is probably gonna be in here somewhere, Mike. How is your day going, ladies and gentlemen? I hope it's going good. I hope you guys are learning from this video. There's always something to soak up. Now when you buy the new and improved 360 booth, the one I got, you notice the remote is a little different. I like this remote because it allows you to control the LED lights from here. You can have the lights on auto. Of course, we all know speed, low, speed high, speed reverse, right? And then the different RGB light settings. So let's go ahead and hit the, you hear that? All right, let me go ahead and turn this thing around. Let me go ahead and just do a quick test, making sure it's not going to hit anything. Nice and slow, nice and slow and steady, making sure there's enough clearance 
and there is enough clearance perfect so remember this step right here down here remember to wiggle the legs into place let them spin until they hit the ground do it for all the legs yeah yeah all right now check this out i'm going to share this is the part where I show you guys something that I've never shown you before. So if you're watching the video up to here, you are definitely being rewarded with this bonus tutorial right in here. So I'm going to show you guys how I'm able to get such clean videos. Watch when I open up Snapic. If you guys want to try Snapic out, use the link in the description box below. It's a seven day free trial. Yeah, seven day free trial. And then if you guys sign up, you guys will get 10% off using my link in the description box below that was a shameless plug in there because i'm a content creator and this is my business and this is my life let's get it all right so i'm gonna go into uh you guys want me to zoom in a little bit more for you all you gotta do is ask baby i'm gonna go come over to where it says configure camera Bloop. i'm gonna use my back camera a lot of you guys are making not so much a mistake but are your preference is to go with back dual camera, back dual wide camera, or telephoto. And let me tell you that the best settings that I use, because I tried them all, is this one, back camera. Your, your regular strong back camera. If you guys use your back ultra wide camera, you'll notice that your videos don't come out as clean as mine. So if you guys want to get a similar production to mine, go with the back camera. Okay. From there, we're going to go start booth. And it's going to register my device. All right, so you guys ready for it? All right, so I'm gonna change the settings up here a little bit, and um, this is it. This is this is what y'all came here for. To, to, so you can see how David gets those quality productions. So look, guys, you can mess with the exposure, and so maybe the camera will capture it. Let me try it here. I'm gonna move. I'm gonna I'm gonna change the settings here on my recording camera because I can record live. I uh, change it while I record live. So look at how I just changed the exposure. So on my camera, I'm changing the exposure right now on the camera I'm using to record. Pay attention to the screen right here. See how I got wider, but it's not, you don't see it as defined. You don't see the, the black and the white. You just see just, just all white. And so as I change the exposure, you guys can see more details in the photo. Well, that's exactly what you guys want to do with your 360 videos. Yeah, so use this exposure right here when your attendees are already on the platform because you'll see how much light is hitting them and either you can lower your lights or you can mess with the exposure. On top of that, you have your ISO. Right now, if I change the ISO on my camera, let me go ahead and hire it a little bit more right there. I'm going to change the ISO on this camera here right now. And watch when I change the ISO. So I'm going to go from 400 to 300. And this is what's going to happen. Let me see if it does it live. Actually went up to 640. Now I'm going to drop the ISO lower, 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 and lower. But as I drop the ISO, I want you guys to notice... Go ahead and zoom. I want you guys to notice that even though I dropped the ISO, the quality is still good, but ideally what I would want is my ISO to be around like this area right here, the 320 area. Cool? So I'm going to go back. So that ISO is not bad. So get familiar with your ISO. Again, practice. Uh, I like Snapping because it does give you the freedom to mess with that. Now we're right here where it says processing. It says video rendering. I want my videos to process fast. The reason I want it to do it fast is because my phone can handle it. I'm using a 15 Pro. So the, the 15 Pro has a really quick processor, so I'm comfortable with that. Now I'm going back to the camera, and you guys are also wondering, David, how do you get your videos to be so stable if we see people just vibing out on your booth? I know. Trust me. I know. So this is the way I get it done. Check this out. Shoo, shoo. What you guys want to do is you guys want to come over to where it says stabilizer over here on the far right. 
click stabilizer and then it's going to say cinematic mode you can go you can have it to off standard or cinematic i leave mine at cinematic now if you guys have a really unstable photo booth then you guys might want to try it cinematic extended but that has its pros and cons i don't want to jump into that because it'll be a lengthy video this one's already lengthy to begin with so i'm gonna leave it at cinematic all right i'm gonna go ahead and do one quick video and then from there what i'm going to do next is i'm going to compare it to another video that's 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 fine-tuned all right so let's do that right now and i didn't want to do this because the gallery is going to show me practicing and the client's going to be like, what, 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 why are you in our gallery? So right now I'm going to shoot this video in automatic mode. And let's go ahead and do that. All right, here we go. Three, two, one. So this is automatic mode right here, y'all. Hey. All right. And then I'm going to just stop it right quick. Now, wait for me. It's going to render really, really fast. In fact, let's watch together if it rendered already here. Boop. And it's done rendering. Pretty fast. Let me see. Let me go ahead and watch this video. I can tell you guys whether I like it or not. Wow. The quality looks really really amazing i'm shooting this one at 20 to 30 frames per second i'm actually really happy with the quality there's not much to change however for the video i'm going to change a couple of things so that we have something to compare it with why don't we do that so let me send myself the video first and now i'm going to record another video but this time i'm going to mess with the settings a little bit that way we can watch the difference together so I'm going to go to start photo booth and I'm going to go back to this section right here. And this time I'm going to go ahead and drop my exposure just a little bit right there. Zero point negative 0 0.12. And then for my ISO, I'm going to reduce my ISO to. I'm going to reduce it to 200. I, re I reduced my ISO to 200. My shutter speed, I'm going to leave it the same. I can even come over to white balance and I can change the temperature to something a little bit warmer. So I changed the temperature on this video. I also changed the exposure to be a little bit dark. Damn, I should have stretched out for this one. Yeah. And then we'll go ahead and let it do its thing and then we'll pause it here in a few seconds over here it's rendering it rendered almost instantly so the video with the temperature looks a little different I actually prefer this isn't bad but I did like the automatic on the temperature side but as far as the clarity and the sharpness this one looks a lot smoother so I would probably go with different settings in combination, com combining both settings. So that's what I would do. So I'll go ahead and uh, send it to my MacBook so I can share it with you guys and you guys can see it here. Oh. Now I wanna know, what did you guys learn here today with Mr. David Rodriguez? Well, not a whole lot. <laughs> no, but really I want you guys to mess with these manual settings instead of leaving an automatic. And I also want you guys to use ample amount of lighting so that your phone doesn't have to compensate for the darkness or the dimness in the room. And then the more light there is, well, the better your production has the potential to come out. Um, I, of course, right now, I just managed to really mess up my English, but that's okay, because I speak it English forever. You guys can't get rid of that fact. Okay, let's go ahead and watch the, the next video together. I'm gonna actually cover what ISO means in cameras and shutter speed and the aperture. ISO, shutter speed, ISO. Let's go.